Okay, hi, I'm Adrian. Um, I help make people's life look easier by teaching meal planning and helping you declutter your life. Um, I will be on the online prosperity TV show. Um, please join us. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Adrienne. Adrienne, how are you doing, my love? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And um, how are you doing this morning? Fantastic. Now, audience, if you're watching this show right now, Adrienne is here to help people save time within their households so that they have less, less wastage in either the resources they have, the food that they have around them, and also she helps people with a meal plan so that people can draw out of a grocery list instead of just going and buying stuff haphazardly within the shop set. Now, Adrian, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and how this all came about. So it started a couple of years ago when we were living on an extremely tight budget. Um, I was nursing full time at, at that stage, uh, 12 hour shifts and then coming home having to cook for you know a family of six and we just were struggling and i never knew what to make so we lived on pasta that's all we ate because it was the quickest easiest and then i changed jobs and i had more time and i sat down and planned like drew up a meal plan for the week and saw that that first week just went so much easier there was no thinking i knew beforehand what i was going to make i went to the shops and i only bought what I needed what I was making for that and as the months grew I changed the plan to include the whole month instead of just one week and my, my shopping as well was now monthly and I suddenly noticed my grocery bill dropping um, and we were a lot healthier the family stopped getting colds as often as they used to and just everybody uh, those who needed to lose weight suddenly started losing weight and I thought well if it's helping me it's got to be helping others um, and I went online looking and there is meal planning for the states but no other country there's nothing there's nothing here in South Africa there's nothing in Australia no companies doing it there's no companies in Europe that are doing it either and I just started from there started writing the blog not expecting it to do as well as it did um, I was quite shocked in the first month of writing how fast it grew and then I started the a proper website and a, you know went a little bit more professional and the changes that I've helped people make has been so rewarding for me when people say you know their mornings are not so rushed anymore planning for the kids the kids aren't throwing out food because it's going off in the fridges and then in itself is a, a hidden savings you know, with the price of food going up and resources being difficult, having your wasting less food is just huge because the food waste in, in the world could feed millions of starving people if we just gave it, you know, planned it properly. And if we stopped wasting resources. Understandable. Yeah, I, um, I would literally understand what you're talking about because I was brought up in Zimbabwe where food was a, a, a hard resource to come by and looking at how people throw away, you know, food, even, you know, wastefully, it is something that of a service of yours, um, you know, is, is very vital. Now, people are spending a lot of money and you are helping them to spend less by, you know, being resourceful uh, of them, um, you know, the, the, the way they're spent. Tell us, give us a little bit of the, of your process on how you actually help these people from start to end. So when we get together on Skype or however we do the interview, you know, um, I ask people beforehand to please go and check their pantry, their cupboards. They need to do a list from that cupboard. And that's where I start with people. We draw up a meal plan using a template. So each day of the week we'll have, you could call it a different theme. So the trend in the world is meatless Mondays. So then we make sure that Mondays is meatless and you know, and it helps people come up with ideas for meals. They don't have to stick to the same thing. Um, ground beef or mince on Tuesdays. And then they choose their recipes or choose the food they want. And then they look at their pantry inventory and they see 
well, actually, I've already got this stuff here. These are my ingredients. I can use these. I don't have to go to the store again. Because often they'll go to the store and they'll go, oh, you know, I need the tomato paste or I need the tomato puree. Come home and they discover they've got four already in the fridge um, or in the cupboard. And that is wasteful because then it just, you keep spending money that you don't need to spend. Um, also, by looking at the portion sizes, how much are they serving at each meal makes a difference as well because often people were making too much of the food or food that the family doesn't really like and having to throw it out a week later because nobody's eaten it and it's gone off. And that is wastage. It's also for people who really don't have a lot of money, learning how to use what they have. Vegetables that are slightly over, you know, the carrots that are a little limp, uh, your tomatoes that are a little looking a little wrinkled, how to use those to make good healthy meals um, and not going to the fast food places. That is a huge thing, is people feel that fast food is better, is quicker and cheaper, and it actually isn't. I can show you that eating healthy actually will make your budget go down, not up, and that you can get a good meal out of vegetables that are just slightly after, after most people would use them. Understandable. So obviously, it's, it's to do with your eating habits, your shopping habits, and also just taking stock of what is in your pantry and then, you know, making sure that you're fully utilizing, um, you know, all the resources and all the commodities up until, you know, they, they, they are fully finished. Now, is it a problem of lack of education or are people just getting lazy to actually really check what else they have or people are not aware that, um, you know, there is help out there for them to to declutter so it's all three of that it's all three of those things we live in a very fast-paced life people don't want to spend time or don't have time to spend making up recipes or cooking healthy food so they feel well just go through the drive-through grab some food and the family's happy and everybody's eaten and i don't have to face the cooking um, so that's the first thing the lack of education of what are you putting in your body not in terms of being like a health nut where I only eat clean foods or I only eat this. It's, it's looking at your portion sizes. It's looking at, you know, what vegetables go with what, not having two starches together. So that's part of the meal planning as well. And if you look at any successful diet, especially the ones that have been around for a long time, they all come with a meal plan. So I think it's also the people don't understand that, Meal planning is not just something that's done by another company. It, it's done by them. Uh, restaurants do it, schools do it. You have to meal plan, otherwise you run out of food or you run out of money at the end of the grocery month. You know, your, your month is a little longer than your salary was and that kind of thing. Understandable. So also these days where people have to choose maybe options between organic and maybe processed foods. What would you recommend that people do? Because organic foods do not last that long. Is that something that you help people with choosing what sort of foods to put on their tables or um, what, what sort of commodities they should go out and buy so that at least they are not either repeating what's already in the pantry or just buying things that are not going to last and they're still going to throw it away again? So those are two of the very important aspects that we look at. Um, eating processed foods is not a healthy option. Obviously, you've got some foods that you do buy processed, your tomato sauces and ketchups and those things, which you do need. But it doesn't have to be organic. It can be just fresh fruit and vegetables or even just frozen. Um, but even buying organic, if you're meal planning, food that isn't going to last long, you would only buy for that week because you know what you're eating for the whole week. So you're only buying the ingredients you're going to use that don't go off. And if they do go off, it's less than what you had bought before because you've gone to the store with no idea in mind of what you wanted and taken stuff off, got home and thought, I'm actually too tired to make that. And then it sits in the fridge and goes off. <laughs> so you've wasted a lot of money. Correct stuff. My wife has a, um, has a system. I, I really don't understand how she does that. Every time she, she, she's going to the shops, she takes a photo of 
the pantry and then she goes in and then goes uh, to see what's not there and that's how she makes her purchases at the shops but I would never have a clue <laughs> what's missing. So, so we, we do it slightly in the reverse. Um, we take a list of what we want to make for the week then we go shopping in our pantry first cross off the, the items that you were supposed to buy for and then only buy what's left on your list. So if you're making, say, spaghetti bolognese for the week you, for, for one night for dinner, you're going to check, do I have the spaghetti? Do I have the tomatoes? Do I have the, the sauce, you know, the, the mince and all those? And what spices? Do I have onions? Do I have garlic? And then from there, that is your shopping list. And if you go to your cupboard and you go, oh, well, I've actually got three packets of spaghetti, cross it off your shopping list. I don't need to buy that. Okay. So those are, those are some of the tips. I, I think I, I don't know if Australia, I don't know if Australia does coupons. Um, here, our coupons are digital. Um, they're on our phones and things. So that's also drawing up your shopping list using your coupons. Okay. Or, or that's a that's a very good idea there. So besides food, what else are you helping people with so that their their houses or their lives um, are kesha? Okay, so the recipes on I, I do supply recipes. The recipes on my website, not, almost I think there's maybe two that take longer than thirty minutes, literally from start to finish, because convenience you need it. I help people with using their slow cookers and using pressure cookers, how to make life easier and cheaper using those items rather than your electric stove or your electric oven, you know, how much electricity is wasted. And then for decluttering in just in general in the house, um, it started off as a thing to keep me on track to decluttering the rubbish in my home, all the children's stuff from when they were babies. Um, my baby's now 13. So, a lot of stuff needs to go and I, st <laughs> I started a Facebook group just for me and a couple of friends to keep me honest and in the year and a half it's nearly two years now that I started it without advertising or anything it's grown um, and it's about 600 people women there are no men on the group it's women only um, just because sometimes some of the questions come up you know i'm not against having men on the group but i found that women are the more likely to be members and it's now become there's people from all over the world that have joined um from the southern hemisphere because of our seasons i i started it because i was following a group in america a huge huge website that is on decluttering but every time she wanted to do something it was the wrong season so she would be changing putting away the winter stuff and pulling out the summer and we're getting our cardigans out and our scarves you know so it just didn't work so i decided well try it myself all right so that's so that's, that's a way that's pretty pretty much amazing so some people wouldn't realize that the things that they have around them is clutter can you just maybe in your own words, define to us what you would see if you walk into somebody's house and then you say, that's clutter, that's clutter, that's clutter. Clutter is mostly things that you really haven't needed. I'm being generous because my husband likes to collect stuff. So I'd say in the last five years, um, if you haven't used it in five years, why do you still have it? You know, I, I'm not talking about baby stuff if you're just starting out your family because that you should keep until you've decided that's the end. But things like, like I said, all mine are teenagers and yet I've still got books for three-year-old children. That is clutter. You know, um, hard as it was getting rid of my university textbooks. I've been qualified for 30 years. What do I still need them for? And they're probably out of date. So those kind of things would be what we would consider clutter. But clutter is also, how is your house arranged? Is it sort of ergonomically arranged? So when you walk into your, say, well, for me, the kitchen, is everything in easy access to each other? So if I'm standing at the stove cooking, can I reach my spices easily? Do I have to walk all the way to the other side of the kitchen to fetch a new pot? Um, can I reach the stuff that I use a lot? Those kind of things. So the decluttering part is, 
I put out a calendar at the beginning of each month and then we do 15 minutes a day so it's not a hard job and so your kitchen counters that takes 15 minutes clear off everything that you haven't used in at least one week then pack away the ones you use weekly go into an easy accessible cupboard and the ones you use monthly must go somewhere a little more difficult to reach but not out of reach you know uh, where do you keep your warranties and your things like that, your manuals, the books that teach you how to clean out your dishwasher properly or how to clean your washing machine correctly. So, so it's, that's what it is. It's organizing the house so that it flows, that it's comfortable. Not that it's magazine worthy, but that it's a home. Okay, I understand so that. Yeah, I thought, I thought maybe every time the house has to look like a display village or a display <laughs> shop here. In a shop like that, great stuff. It wouldn't work here. <laughs> great. So obviously, this is something that a lot of people are benefiting from. What sort of responses are you getting from the ladies that are in your group? Um, you know that you know may have not had an idea that their lives actually get better by them not having as much clutter around them. They feel organized. What sort of reviews or testimonials are you getting from people you've helped? So. When we speak to people, my biggest testimonial, I would say, is on the decluttering, is how it's grown organically. That I've never had to advertise that group whatsoever. I've done no marketing on it or anything. And to me, that shows how many people really actually need just the guidance, not somebody to come in. They don't want to pay someone to come in and clear out all their stuff. They want to be able to do it in a manageable way. And that for me is showing when they grow, when they grow the group. But other ways are like having friends or, or people stop me um, because of the groups I belong to. Some of them are quite, they're large, but the community is small um, in my area. And they'll go, hang on, aren't you the lady? Uh, or I've had feedback where a lady has said, oh, look what I did from your recipe that you shared with me you know, or school lunches are much easier now because it's already on the board. I know what I'm making. I don't have to think about it. And it means I get up half an hour later instead of, you know, at 5 a.m. to make lunch, that kind of thing. Or, or, you know, having, we're going to have egg mayonnaise tomorrow for school lunch. I know the night before already, so my eggs are done. You know, those, those kind of things. Understandable. Which, yeah, it, it, it is it is quite nice if you're making other people's lives easier and better in, in the process. So you're helping people plan meals, you're helping people, um, you know, sanctify their houses so that they can actually enjoy their own abode. Now, somebody might have been watching this and, you know, very intrigued about how you two can help them. How can people get a hold of you there, Adrian? So there are a couple of ways. Um, on the website, there are booking links to book appointments through Skype um, or Zoom. I can do that. And once or twice I've done on Facebook, you know, Messenger. Um, sometimes I'm in my group. I've got a group called Cushering Your Life on Facebook. And then we're getting sorted is the decluttering one. So I've tried to keep them a little bit separate because not everybody has the same needs. Um, and in there, I often do live videos. There's a lot of downloads. My website has a lot of things that they can download and print, like meal planners, uh, shopping lists, you know, that kind of, you know, how to go about, how to start. Um, in South Africa, online shopping has become a big thing for their groceries. So I've got articles on how to do that, articles on how to start. So the so best way is the website. I do have a, a chat box um, so that they can ask questions or get in contact through the chat box, um, you know, just to ask anything. I understand. And then I get, I get that. Cool. I will put down all the information that you've just um, given us there in the show notes so that people get a... Um, you know, a hold of you and maybe they can ask you a few questions. So do you also help people to sell their stuff on maybe Gumtree or Facebook marketing? What's that Facebook marketplace or in the group when they are decluttering? So, so what I've done is in my decluttering group, I have a list, well, mostly for Johannesburg, but obviously for other places, 
if people are joining the group and they've got charities in their area that they know about, then I would put the put it on the list of charities. I call it charities to support. So far there are about 20 where you can either donate your stuff or I give suggestions like to have three boxes. You have your donate, you have your sell, and you have your task. Um, and the, the sell one is, to, my best way is to hold the garage sale or, or whatever they, I know here we, you know, a yard sale, I think it's called, yeah. where people can sell it, you know. Um, I haven't really done much on Gumtree or sold or bought anything like on Gumtree. I, not very good with that. Um, my daughter's very good at that part. She's got rid of a lot of stuff. Um, so, you know, it's just also word of mouth. And, and if you do have something that somebody that you think may need, that's still useful, but not useful for you, then put it on and say, I have this. Um, this is where I, this is my area. So if you're in that area, let's negotiate and then private message that way. Um, it's just, I've never, you know, gone in detail because it was something when I started the group, it wasn't actually something that was needed at the time. Right. It was just, for me, it was, I knew what I was going to do to get rid of the stuff. I was going to hold a sale every four to six months to get rid of things that I don't need anymore. Um, yeah. Uh, but every month you turn out because every week, every day you're doing a different area, so you're collecting stuff to throw, you know, to sell. So it's not all at, it's not one thing at a time, which can be quite tedious. Great stuff. Well, this has been fantastic, um, and we really, really appreciate you for your knowledge, your expertise, and also just your passion about helping people have a life that's you know um, of a happier existence. Do you have any? Last words for those people that are probably just still holding on to their stuff and hoarding and not decluttering, uh, that you can tell them that on the other side, when they let go, life will be a whole lot better. So there's a lady called Marie Kondo. Um, she's very big in America. Um, and she, turn, she says that if it doesn't give you joy, don't hold on. If it doesn't give you, you know, if you hold an item and it doesn't make you feel good, then, you know, it's, you've got to let it go. It's time to let it go. Um, and that, that is, to me, a great idea as well. So, you know, if people need advice, they're welcome. I have tw um, sessions and that are 20 minutes that are completely free um, just to get people going or to get them to see, do they need this? How much help do they need? Do they need ongoing or can they do this on their own just by joining a group, you know, or finding like-minded people in their area? Understandable. Yeah, understandable. Well, Adrienne, I can't thank you enough for your time, your expertise and your knowledge um, on this subject in Meta. See, if you're watching this right now, you would understand that maybe sometimes you just don't realize that you're actually being frustrated and you're actually struggling to either save your own sanity or your own money by just holding on to things that are not giving you joy anymore. So go on to Adrian's uh, website. I'll be putting it all in the comments so that you too can figure out what it is that, um, you know, you can let go of or just be amongst like-minded people, like she says, um, you know, that would, you know, motivate you to be, do and have a life of a happier existence. Now, Adrian, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been great speaking to you and, you know, it's wonderful acknowledgement for me that somebody out there is paying attention and listening. <laughs> we always are. We always are. Thank you so much.